What is up, guys? Welcome back to another week of the Dabba Jiu Jitsu podcast. I'm back with my buddy Austin Ogle this week. What's up, guys? And this week, what we got for y'all is uh, a concept that is kind of hitting home to us right now. At least for me, it is. I don't know if it is for you, but um, we're going to be talking today about width versus depth techniques. And so just to kind of start it off, I guess, just to throw out the idea of, you know, whenever you're learning jujitsu in a way that's like, here's here's one technique, here's one submission, you know, you, you learn, you learn it the basic, like, like think of it like you're learning it the very basic way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think learning it from a depth perspective, if you learn that submission, when you try it one a different time, now somebody defends it. And then now you have the answer for that defending option. And you have the second level of that, which is what creates the depth for that submission. Yeah. So, I, guys, basically, like, when we're talking, like, width versus depth, we're referring to, like, a submission, right? Or a technique, a it pass, can, yeah, something, it could be anything, anything like yeah. that. Uh, knowing a bunch of them or at the uh, surface level yeah or right. knowing one and getting really 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 good at it where you know no matter what you're going to be able to have it so for an example like an arm bar right let's say you the one your go-to submission is an arm bar you're looking for it and no matter what position you're in and that is because you've developed that depth with that arm bar versus seeing an arm bar going for it oh didn't have it now i know a bunch of other techniques to get into a different position or a different submission versus seeing wanting that arm bar and just digging deep for it and going for it in any position any way always transitioning with how am i going to get this dude's elbow at some point and always in your mind well and i think that changes people's way of rolling too because if they're if they're if they know something at the that like let's just call it level one through five okay level one meaning white belt level level five you know it at the black belt level you can get it on black belts you know you know down the sequence of defenses that they're gonna do and you know the counters to those they know the defenses and you just keep going down the sequence until you tap out a black belt with whatever you know submission that that you you see fit so we'll call it level one through five just based on that. So say you go for like a level one submission on somebody and it doesn't work because it usually does. And for some reason this time it just doesn't work Mm -hmm. from a width perspective. Now, are you abandoning that submission and going for something else or from a depth perspective? Are you not giving up on it? And are you tweaking something that maybe they're doing to defend it to now have the counter to it so that you're developing that at maybe the level two now instead mm-hmm. of level one. Yeah. So does that make I, sense? Yeah, no, no, that makes that makes sense to me. I, I know personally I, there isn't one submission that I feel is I have it. I'm always going for it. It's always in my mind. I know I can explore that route at any point with anybody. I don't really have that. And I think it's because I have a, a habit of I'm bored, I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm watching a bunch of different techniques and seeing a bunch of different submissions, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, and I want to try it. And it adds the width. Yeah, and I, so I have a a big thing on doing width, right? I always like to see new things, and then I want to try new things, and every now and then I'll go back and try and develop, you know, the beginning techniques, but, and you know, we do it a lot in class, too, you know, when we work like the, from in the guard, stuff like that, Mm -hmm. um, and it's good because it always you always need to come back and hone those beginning skills. Those are the basics, right? If you have good basics, you have good jujitsu. But I like to see I see something new and I want to try it. And I'm always catching myself like, hey, I saw that on Instagram. Let's go try it 30 minutes later while we're rolling with our friends. And then I just keep trying it until it works. I'm like, oh, it worked. Cool. And then I end up forgetting that I have it and I see a new technique and I just want to keep trying that. Um, and I think that kind of rolling and, and experimentation is good with certain people. Yeah. Like certain people that you know, like, okay, if I go for my A game submission against this person who maybe it's their first week or first month, it's not really going to benefit you to do that kind of move on them. Yeah. Maybe play around a little more with something that maybe you've been wanting to experiment or with something that 
maybe you've been having trouble with. So maybe putting yourself in a bad position, mm-hmm. not, not like on purpose, but kind of, I guess it's kind of on purpose. Yeah, allowing yourself to get to a position that you're uncomfortable with. Right? Yeah. I mean, part of jujitsu is being comfortable with the uncomfortable. So, um, no, but, I, but that's a good time to actually try to implement whatever you're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, trying to implement that depth is whenever you're in an uncomfortable spot, right? You know. And, and just to piggyback on that, um, I think, man, I want to say up until now, really, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, um, like, like we've, like me and Austin have said before, like we're just two blue belts, we're just doing this thing because we're passionate about it, we know we're going to be doing it for a long time and we just want to get the content out there, so please don't say, don't think anything that we say is, is absolute in any way. Far um, from it. And so... I, for the longest time, whenever I was trying to build my database of, you know, mental techniques, I guess in my head, my database, mm-hmm. we'll call it my database, I was trying to develop width mm-hmm. because I was, and, and, and I think they kind of tell you that at the beginning to just be a sponge. Yeah. And I guess it just didn't really hit me until like kind of somewhat recently that maybe Maybe I need to stop focusing so much on that width, and maybe I need to start focusing on what I actually do like in these certain positions, and then maybe let me start tweaking some of that. Maybe figure out why this works on this body type, but it doesn't work on this body type. Maybe I can tweak something. And and you know, maybe I think why your mindset's kind of changed that way is you've kind of started to really grab a hold of this is my game, right? And I'm not going to say it on here in case you decide to roll with somebody and now they're like, oh, this guy, I know his game. But you started to develop a a playing style mm-hmm. that you really enjoy. And so now that you've found that one that you like, now you're wanting to build that depth and make that game even better, right? And like we've said it before, developing our A game, you found your go-to game, you like it, you have fun with it, it's now your A game. You want to make that A game even better. So maybe that's, I think that might be why you've kind of started to change your mindset in that way a little bit. Me, I'm still trying to explore and see what style I like and, and the game I like to play. I haven't really found a, a a style that I'm very, very comfortable in yet that I know like, hey, no matter that I'm what, if I'm here, I'm good. And so I think that's kind of why I'm still in that, that width mindset. I want to have a little bit of knowledge and everything until I find that one that I'm like, oh, I really like this. Oh, this really works for me, for my body type, for my mindset, for whatever it may be, right? Um, once I find that, then I think I'm going to really want to develop it and then go in depth with it. So I think it's more, at least that's how you're I still, see it. You're still sampling. I'm still sampling a lot of things, buffet, right? I'm still like, right? oh, here we are in guard. Let's, let's pull rubber. And then I get there and I'm like, ah, I'm cramping. I was actually just about to bring it yeah, up. Yeah, right? like, I'm like pulling rubber. I'm like, ah, I'm cramping. Maybe this isn't my style, but... I like to explore it and learn it. And once I find my my niche, I think, is when I'll really start to get that depth. And it may be different for everybody else. Every, so other people may be like, you know, I don't really want the depth. I just want the width. I want to know as much as I can about as much as I can, or as little as I can about as much as I can, right? They want to be jack of all, not a master of any. So jack of all, master none. I was trying to play on words there and it didn't really work. I've been stumbling a lot lately. But, uh, you know, and that, I don't really see anything wrong with that. But I'm also still in that mindset myself. And I'm sure people, have, many people have made it to black belt with that mindset. And those guys are probably very dangerous. But, I mean, we... Sure, I mean, you probably you probably have some black belts out there that can tap you with any anything literally that they want to tap you out with. Mm-hmm. And that's that's another level, I think, in itself. Uh, to be able to do that but then you also have those black belts i feel like at least with some of the ones that i've rolled with that you roll with them and you could tell they have a certain style and they have really developed this and you know if you just get caught in their game that it's just it's not going to go well for you You need to you need to backtrack and try to go down another branch of that tree they're a spider they've set their trap and you're the fly that fell into their web and they're going to get you I was I came up with that on the spot. That was that, that one was that easy. Was, you yeah. didn't trip over that one. I didn't know, and that was on the spot. You know, kudos to me. There you go. Self five. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, I 
I've also seen it as well, not even just with a black belt, but brown belts, whatever. You have, you know those guys, and when you start rolling, and you feel them start wiggling for a position, you know where they're going. You're like, ah, oh, nope, not going to let you go there. And at that point, you just go flat out to defending them getting to that position. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where that width should come in, right? Flat out defending to get to that position. Now they're like, oh, okay, well, I can still go over here, and I can do this, and I can do that, and I can whatever. Um, but then you got those guys that are really, really good, and no matter how much you're defending this position, they're, you're there. They still got you. Well, they probably know at the at the depth level how to adjust every little thing just so that you are falling down this funnel of what they want so that they can eventually come to this submission that they are leading you down. Because yeah. when, when you start off, there's there's multitude of different ways the role can go. Even just starting standing, like versus a takedown versus guard pulling, like it just it starts it starts this funnel process and. Uh, I think Audrey Gracie was like one of the best. I think somebody was talking to me about how he described it. And he described it as, yeah, well, I have these positions that I want to keep people in. Mm-hmm. And if they get out of it, you need to do a lot to like bring them back in. And then when they make a movement, you bring them down further. Mm-hmm. I'll have to post a link to the video. But it basically drew, drew them down a funnel of what he eventually wanted to do as a as an arm bar. Yeah. And I think that's why some of the guys, and I'll mention Gordon Ryan right now, with some of the, the competitions and tournaments that we've seen him in, he'll he'll post something like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna tap this guy with an arm bar. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, like, you know, he will he'll like give it to the announcer like right before he goes yeah, on. I remember that. And and then he like reveals it afterwards and it ends up being the th- thing but was it an arm bar? i think it was a triangle is what he said he'd get him with was it a triangle i don't know it was one of the two it was one of the like the beginning submissions that you learn I remember right because they're like how is he going to get another black belt with something like that right but the dude's good man yeah. the dude's got a lot of depth i don't see i think depth is good I mean, we kind of had this conversation before we you know hit record um when you were talking about, you know, what was it? You th- I think you said Eddie Bravo was talking about it, where, you know, you make a move, somebody defends it, make another move, somebody defends it, and it's having like nine, ten different parts of a sequence because you know where you're going to end up, right? You're, you're, you're trying up. to draw that funnel. Exactly. And that's – so now – yeah, I get it. You, you're you're yeah, envisioning yeah, I, the funnel process I, Yeah, now. I just – So it's just – minimizing the amount of moves that they can defend the next level with Mm -hmm. and then once you got them there it's minimizing those and now they're here and they have less movement there and then at a certain point i mean it's going to be inevitable yeah you end up at that submission so that's that building depth thing that you know you're right i mean i think width is a good thing to know about because you obviously want to have an overall balanced game Mm -hmm. for sure but at a certain point, I think you do start to, and maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just getting overwhelmed with the amount of things that there are out there to explore. Oh, there's so many. There's and, so many. And some of the positions that I've been in, like, I just don't, I, you can just kind of feel that it doesn't work for your body type or that you enjoy it. And it's just a multitude of factors that kind of contribute to, uh eh, Maybe I'm not gonna do this stuff, yeah. and that's that's why I was gonna bring up rubber guard mm. because rubber guard is one of those where I'll try it every now and then, but usually when I get it and I have their posture broken down, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Yeah, because I, I haven't now what I haven't experimented enough with it, and yeah. I know I know there's there's some omoplata stuff in there, and I know there's there's some gogo plata stuff in there as well, but as rubber guard is one is a guard that I just I want to be good at. Yeah, and so like it's well, it's there. new. It's it's it's, it's cool. a new toy. Yeah, yeah. and like I, I just want to be good at it. And every time I'm in someone's or I'm on my back and someone's in my guard, I immediately first thing I do is I'm grabbing that foot, and then I'm like, well, why did I do this? Because now I don't know where I'm going from here. <laughs> here we are, just sitting and looking at the clock. Like, oh man, there's a lot of time, and I here I am holding my foot. My hips starting to cramp out. I need to stretch my hip flex for a little bit more for this. But I just want to be good at it. And then I'd give it up. I'm like, okay, I don't know where to go from here. Let's just go back to what I know. But so it's a good 
like initial starting position for bringing posture down. Yeah, because that leg on on the top of the the top of their neck helps out a lot. Oh, I mean, I usually whenever you keep passing my guard, that's what I'm going to go with you. Is I'm going to pull that rubber and just, so I have a second to slow you down. It's funny sometimes whenever I feel like you're about to put rubber on, I'm like. That sounded really dirty. Oh, wow. <laughs> this guy, dude. <laughs> anyway. Let's, let's light a candle first. Yeah. Jeez, burning. Yeah, maybe we get a beer. Yeah. Um, but no, whenever I start to feel rubber guard getting put on, it's like. I still hit smell it. <laughs> I know. It's out there now. It's just a thing. All right. But it, like, I can't see what's happening behind my head. And so a lot of the times I'm like, is, is, is he going rubber guard? Yeah. What? And I'm like, oh, there, yep, he is. There's a All split. right. And then it's, no, you let it go. <laughs> Why'd you let it go? I didn't know what to do. Let me throw this one out. I know we're going down a rabbit hole right here on this That's one. That's all right. We, but I think they expect us to go down rabbit holes right. at this point. Every time we talk, guys, this you know, this podcast here, he was like, this shouldn't be more than 10 minutes. And I was like, yeah, right. And how many rabbit holes we're about to get? Go ahead. Hit me with your rabbit I went down a rabbit hole talking about rabbit holes. Go ahead. Rubber guard, no key. Style, yeah. right? Yeah. Have you heard of something called Gubber Guard? G- no. Gubber Guard. Gubber Guard. G U B B E R. Okay. It's well, like Rubber Guard. Enlighten me. But with the gee. Would it still just not be rubber? It's called Gubber. But why? It's the same. Because of the G? I don't know. So it's just a play on words? Well, I mean, I, I imagine, I, and I don't know. I Obviously, I have to do more research on this, but I imagine. It just gives way to more lapel chokes and more different setups that you can't get with no gi. Okay. I mean, I could see it. We talked about gi, no gi last week. I mean, this is probably one of the differentiating things of, like, you can't... heated. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> that was good. I, it was a good discussion. But with, like, worm guard, you can't really do worm guard and no gi. No, you mm-hmm. can't. I mean, I... I get it, 100%. There is... I, that's kind of going back, like what we talked about last week, where if you're good at something in no gi, you're going to be really good at it in gi, right? Because less grips. So would that still not work? Is like you build your depth with no gi, and then you get into gi, or well, width with no gi, and then your depth with gi... Do you see what I'm trying to get I, at? I think you I had it, have it backwards. I think you had it right on that last one. I think with your no gi, you're building. Yeah. Now, I mean, now, now, you're now, now you got me second guessing myself. Yeah. Um, I, I guess with gi, it would be building your depth because you have a little bit more options. I mean, you have, but you can also build width that way too because you have. Because you have different options. So wouldn't gi? No, gi would be width. Think of like a, think of like a loop choke. Like yeah, you can't do a loop choke and no gi. Yeah, but you're right. But then, but if you want to get better at one particular like technique, you would go no gi, right? Less grips, get really good at that. That would build your depth. That would yeah. Be- so I think that would build your fundamental base for gi. And then once you put on the gi, you already have that no gi fundamental. I think we're now with something, but we just really don't know how to get there. Well, you know I, I I think we're we're getting to. I think the the no gi is going to build your fundamental. Yeah. base of what you want to develop as a technique called an arm bar for okay. whatever reason now you go to the gi you already have a fundamental idea of an arm bar for a no gi mm-hmm. now you have the at the gi you can still do the same things in no gi but now you have more options now you have different ways of setting up now you have you know lapels that you can throw different arm bars so i i do think that's kind of what it is i think no gi maybe is look at us we're stumbling onto stuff <laughs> who would have thought Different topic. And now we got to talk about that one later on. But that'll be on the list. Yeah, we just we have a big old list and we just try and check it off week by week. And there's some that we're really procrastinating on. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get to it. We'll get there. But so we got to start bringing people on too. Because once oh. we start bringing people on, I think once we go into people's stories and stuff, it'll be a lot Dude, different than us. I'm, I'm fired up to bring people on. Guys that are listening, some of y'all have reached out to us. I, I want y'all to know, like, we are legitimately excited to try and set something up and get y'all to come in and join us because this, we have fun with this. I I have a good time. We were willing to try and do it the other night at, like, midnight when we both had work at early in the morning. Realized probably wasn't a smart idea, but, like, that's how much we're looking forward to doing this stuff. 
So to bring somebody else on and really kind of enlighten people on what it's like to to do this and, and have a good time, dude, it's firing me. Well, up. And it's getting to learn people's stories too, because like, mm-hmm. like I I know I keep saying it, and I know I sound like a broken record, but there's so many good stories out there that I I, I just want to bring people on and. And that's one of the reasons why I love jujitsu is because it, it introduces you to so many different types of people. There's but, so many different types of people that have one common interest and mm-hmm. really I wouldn't necessarily have a common goal because some people are just out there for exercise, some people are out there to compete, some people that, are out there for a black belt. That but, could be that could be a topic. What is your goal for jujitsu? Is it fitness? Is it MMA? Is it black belt? Is it you want to train sport jujitsu? Do you just want a black belt? Like, I think. I'm gonna write that one down real quick. He is currently writing it down. I am writing it down. As we speak. Oh, we did it. We can look at us, dude. This look, is look at, look at dude, we're we're on one today, man. Go for we it. are on one. Sound it out. Atta boy. F O R not F O U R. Fower. So did I did I cut you off? You were about to say something. I and don't know. Did was I? I, I think you were about to say something, and I I talk I started talking about bringing people on. Uh, but no, well, okay. So I go. think when we bring people on, though, we could even go back and explore some of these previous topics. Like, it, guys, if that are listening, if y'all come on and there's something that we've talked about, tell us. Like, hey, you know, I'd like to come back to a previous topic. There's some stuff I want to add. I think our two perspectives we're very similar, right? We hang out all the time. That's kind of why we hang out all the time because we're very similar. I think our perception on a couple of things may be kind of skewed, right? Yeah. And we can bounce mm-hmm. ideas off each other, but they're not going to be far off from each other, right? Right. So when we bring people on, someone may come in and be like, look, y'all are talking about the, you know. Y'all said this, but in real reality, you know, if we're talking like a black belt or a brown belt or even a purple belt, mm-hmm. they could be like, yeah, um, that's not how it happens at this level. We can be completely off on it. Yeah, and, and that's... Even a topic like this with width versus depth, right? I think someone can come in and maybe enlighten us on, you know, this is why width is better. This is why you want to have width. Or, no, this is why depth is better. You want to have depth. And I think because of everyone's story, everyone's going to have a different perspective. There's people probably listening to us right now that are like, you guys are way off. Especially in the gi versus no gi. I guarantee you a lot of people are going to want to talk about that. But um, people are going to hop in and be like, y'all are way wrong like we can bring people in and then just immediately off the bat hey gee or no gee and you're not my best friend and you're not coming back (laughs) (laughs) you chose wrong um but gee all right here's a beer welcome to the club guys welcome to the club but but we are in the process of adding some stuff so that we can start adding that video uh aspect to it so i i actually just got in the mail today um some audio sound so that it can keep the audio in I'm, I'm looking at getting some mics um potentially a, a desktop table we can sit at and we're yeah, in we're, we're, th- things are in the works right now so the guy y'all that have joined this journey early just watch we're gonna progress we i think we have so much fun with it that we're we're gonna ride it out we're gonna we're gonna make a thing i mean we're gonna be doing this arguably for the rest of our lives so we're all, why, why not start Jesus documenting there, yeah. why not start documenting our journey now yeah and so I, dude i can't wait to see the progression we're gonna have people on we're gonna have a good time and we're gonna add different elements to it I, this is this is gonna be good man and i guys thank y'all for joining early because y'all are gonna be the ones that are going to see this progression and be a part of it because we're bringing you on too so i mean i'm I like some of the ideas that we have some topics that we can bounce around later and you know this one right here probably wasn't the most broadest of topics it's not one that we're gonna go running on but that's the beauty of this is it's not it doesn't have to be an hour no, podcast every we don't have time. guidelines that hey we're gonna follow this we're gonna follow that we're gonna follow this we're gonna follow that it's here's a topic let's talk about it and when we start these out we really don't have that much notes in front of us maybe we have like a couple bullet points just to kind of keep us on on kind of the same topic but yeah we end up going down rabbit holes and and the way austin and i format these podcasts is we don't mind it we we don't mind let diving down these tangents so let it flow let it flow um man there was something i was going to ask you about but it slipped my mind long day at work so maybe we'll have to hit that one up a little bit is later. it about you don't remember what it was about long day at work 
As I can mention one more thing, if it'll buy you some time, but no, long day at work. Okay. I'm and cool with it if you are. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, with it. all right. Well, as always, guys, thank y'all for joining us this week, and um, we will see y'all next Tuesday. Looking forward to it, guys. Y'all have a great rest of your week.